The sermon for May 16th, 2021, Change and Transformation. From the Song of Songs 2, 8 through 13. Listen, my beloved, look, here he comes leaping across the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. My beloved spoke and said to me, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one. Come with me, see, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone. Flowers appear on the earth, the season of singing has come, the cooing of doves is heard in our land, the fig tree forms its early fruit, the blossoming vines spread their fragrance. Arise, come, my fair one, my beautiful one, come away with me. And from 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 12, and 16 through 18. If you only look, you might well miss the brightness. We carry this treasured message around in the unadorned clay pots of our ordinary lives. That's to prevent anyone from confusing God's incomparable power with us. You know for yourselves that we're not much to look at. We've been surrounded and battered by troubles, but we're not demoralized. We're not sure what to do, but we rest assured that God knows. We've been spiritually oppressed, but God hasn't left our side. We've been thrown down, but we haven't broken. What they did to Jesus, they do to us. Trial and torture, mockery and murder. What Jesus did among them, he does in us. He lives. Our lives are at risk, which makes Jesus' life all the more evident in us. So we're not giving up. How could we? On the outside, it looks like things are falling apart. On the inside, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming blessings. There's more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are passing away, but the things we can't see now will last. Have you noticed how growing older brings changes, whether we want them or not? Before starting to record my sermon today, I gazed into a magnifying mirror, any seeds caught in my teeth, <laughs> and found myself admiring my many, many wrinkles. Close up. How many women can say that? I love mine. Growing older, I hope we get some wisdom and perspective. We've seen a lot more in life than younger folks. Many of us have encountered grief as we get older. My grandparents had that saying cross-stitched, growing old is not for sissies, encountering change. I once heard of a couple that had three children. They didn't want any more, so she had a tubal ligation. After that, they had another baby. So he had surgery for no more kids. And after that, they had twins. The family adjusted, but talk about change that you didn't look for. There are changes that come against our will and some that we choose. When I went to seminary, I had stayed home with our first two kids and knew that I had to respond to God's call or go crazy, especially in a rural area where people saw me as an outsider. I was pastor's wife just passing through, so they had no interest in connecting with me, not as much as they did their own friends, their lifelong friends. Um, those were lonely, lonely decades. Pre-internet, remember, I'm old. While going to seminary, I underestimated how much growth and change I'd experience. I'm glad for it now, but at the time, mm, it was hard. And my husband has experienced anger at some of the ways that I've changed from when we were first married. In times of personal change, our lives are not the same. The sense of self is different, and we can't return to the way we were, and we really wouldn't want to return. How do we respond during times of change as the beloved children of God? We've all been thrown into change because of the pandemic, 
How are we doing with that? I just heard about a group of ministers that will be getting together to talk about how we are different from before, what the treasures of life are now, what we hope to keep, and what we can let go of. I know we don't want to return to the hamster wheel way of life. So how do we decide what to keep? My engineer son loves working from home and knows that he wants that for the rest of his life and is prepared to change jobs if needed uh, when the rest of the office returns. And his wife loves working from home as well. And the grand dog, well, thriving. You know how pets are. <laughs> well, our God shows us the way into loss and death and then through that into new life from mourning to joy, from being lost to being found. God is just like that, helping us with being transformed into newness of life. If you want to always be the same, don't sign on with Jesus, who calls disciples to follow, take up the cross, be crucified, and be raised to new life. When change comes, what is the primary emotion? I think we feel fear, a fear of powerlessness, a fear of loss, a fear of the unknown. Growing in wisdom, being transformed is a part of maturing. God wants to use the difficulties that come our way as a refining fire to burn the dross away. Some define change as less than transformation. Change has more to do with reacting and adapting without necessarily being made new. Transformation involves newness of being, affecting everything. The caterpillar can tell you about transformation into a butterfly. Certain stubborn folks, no names here please, reluctantly react and adjust without really becoming new. I think the experience of giving birth tends to change women as a group more than men. There are lots of exceptions to that too. Most people react to change and transformation by digging in their heels and being dragged toward it, like being dragged to the edge of a cliff. Occasionally we ask for transformation because staying in the old pattern becomes too hard. It takes courage to push yourself to places you have never been before, to test your limits, to break through barriers. And the day comes when the risk it took to stay tight inside the bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. That's from Anais Nin. Transformation at its best is painful whether we fight it or not. My opinion is that we might as well go with it. Jesus talked about a seed having to die for the plant to grow and bear fruit. We've seen that with our own eyes. It helps when you know that you're not left alone with the struggle of growing. We know, as Paul says, that we're common clay pots carrying around the treasured good news of Jesus' love, teaching, and life. Jesus was never about the power and glory of empire, ruling from on high, forcing things to be this way or that way. Instead, the message of powerlessness, of lowliness, of being humiliated, that's where Jesus lived and died. Jesus did not claim privilege and power, took the lowest place, encouraged others to take the lowest place, then left the rest to God. Jesus is never about forcing change. Clean up your act. Pull yourself together, and you'd better produce a decent report card, young man. Instead, Jesus walks with us and offers an invitation like the lovers in Song of Songs. The woman says, look, my love comes to me, bounding across the hills like a deer, standing behind the wall, peering in at the lattice of the garden. My beloved spoke and said to me, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one. Come with me. See, the winter is past. The rains are over and gone. Flowers appear on the earth. The season of singing has come. The cooing of doves is heard in our land. God offers us an invitation to transformation. 
Do you imagine staying at Caterpillar or becoming a butterfly? Some people see God as only offering law, a list of do's and don'ts, guilt and shame. Do this or go to hell. I've heard that in a sermon. Throughout the whole Bible is a stream of God offering transformation, like the lovers calling to one another in Song of Songs, like God as a mother in Psalm 71. Loving God, we run to you. You give us space for renewal, a guest room where we can retreat and heal. Your door is always open. As a loving mother, you've been there since birth. You've lifted us up from the cradle. You've nurtured us from our youth, helping us learn all that we know. We've seen trouble, the lowest point in life. Turn to us, be tender with us, rescue us. That's a paraphrase from Psalm 71. Jesus loves people into healing and wholeness. And like Paul said, on the outside, it looks like things are falling apart. On the inside, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without unfolding grace. Amen.